Welcome to the Q1 FY22 Earnings Conference Call of Luxury Organic Industries Limited. As a reminder, all Pariscan lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Divakar Singhle from Christensen Advisory. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Margaret. Uh, welcome all the investors. Uh, good evening, good morning to whichever geography you are from. Uh, welcome to the Q1 FI 22 earnings call of uh, Lakshmi Organic Industries Limited. Before we proceed to the call, let me remind you that the discussion may contain forward-looking statements that may involve known or unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors. It must be viewed in conjunction with our business risks. That could cause future result performance or achievement to differ significantly from what is expressed or implied by such forward-looking statements. To take you through the results and to answer your questions, we have the top management of uh, Lakshmi, uh, represented by Mr. Ravi Goenka, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Satyesh Nabas, Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Harshwardhan Goenka, Executive Director of Business Development Strategy, and Mr. Parker Roy Chaudhary, the Chief Financial Officer. We will start the call with a prepared remark by Mr. Ravi Goenka, after which we'll go on to the Q&A. Over to you, Mr. Goenka. Thank you, Mr. Pengle. Appreciate it. Uh, very good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to our uh, quarter one FY22 earnings call. I'm delighted to be speaking to you and to present a commentary on our, this quarter's performance and give you an update on the events of the subsequent period. At the outset, I must say that the second wave of COVID impacted the supply chain and the general operations, especially on manpower availability. Still, our employees' dedication and commitment helped us surmount the challenges and we could turn in a strong performance this quarter. I thank my efforts. Some of the highlights of our financial performance our operating revenues were at 690 crores versus 467 crores in the last uh, financial quarter, quarter four of last year, registering a 48% uh, quarter on quarter growth. Our EBITDA was 137 crores uh, versus 56 crores of the last quarter, a growth of 146% uh, Q on Q. Our EBITDA margin stood at 19.82% against. 0.88%, and uh, this is an expansion by almost uh, 800 bits for this uh, quarter on quarter. Our profit after tax on a standalone basis uh, is 99 crores as compared to 31 crores in the last quarter, which is a growth of 216%. Our EPS was 3.74 compared to 1.34 in the last quarter. It would be interesting to point out that the EBITDA impact for this quarter are at 67% and 80% of the last fiscal, respectively. So, indeed, we have a stellar financial performance this quarter. While a lot of the investors might have a good understanding of our business, there could be many and some who are first-time attendees. For them, allow me to speak very briefly about our businesses. As you may know, we are primarily a business, B2B business, currently operating in two verticals, the AI business, which is acetyl intermediates, and the SI vertical, which is the specialty intermediates. Our upcoming FI, or the fluorochemical vertical, is under implementation. At Lakshmi, we cater to a large variety of uh, end consumers, specifically in the pharma, agro, flexible packaging, colors, pigments, inks, paints, and coatings. And across these sectors, the domestic demand has been growing at double-digit rates over the last five years and expected to maintain trajectory over the next five as well, while the global demand is growing at a rate of 4 to 6 percent CAGR. We play a significant role in the acetyl intermediate business in India. Our company, along with its sister concern, Yellowstone Chemicals Private Limited, 
is one of the largest producers of ethyl acetate. Our company has over 33% of the share of the domestic market, and we are the largest exporter of the product to more than 25 countries. We are a consistent supplier to Europe over the last several years, where we have a direct presence. We are also one of the largest suppliers of fuel-grade ethanol to the oil marketing companies under the oil blending program of the government of India. Our speciality intermediates journey began with the acquisition of the Daikitin business of Clarion in 2010. Since then, we have increased our revenue more than five times, added 20 new products to our own in-house R&D, and expanded the volume, volume capacity by more than three times. Presently, we remain the only player of this platform in India as we speak, and with a significant share of the domestic market. In this vertical, in addition to the sectors mentioned above, we also cater to the needs of flavors and fragrances and the polyester industry. Our latest initiative is in the floral speciality space. We acquired the assets, technology, and other paperwork of Miteni, SPA of Italy, and currently we are in the process of relocating this plant at our new greenfield site at Lote Parshuram in Maharashtra. This will introduce us to the world of organofluorine compounds and electrochemical fluorination. This initiative will bring in a library of new high-margin niche products and at the same time, de-risk ourselves by reducing dependency on a few volatile raw materials and a single location operation. This is an R&D intensive initiative. And our plan is to have an additional R&D center in Italy, and this we shall soon achieve in the next six months to nine months. This will be our touch point with the European innovator companies in pharma, agro, and other segments. With this background, let me now elaborate on some of the key drivers of the growth for this quarter. Our acetyl intermediate business showed a smart uptick attributable to better realizations, and we capitalized on the market opportunity. This once again reinforced our confidence that we can achieve not only a cost path through but even a much higher margin, even in the face of a severe escalation in input costs, while maintaining a high level of operational excellence. In the specialty intermediates, the growth can be attributed to both volumes and product optimization. Our SI business recorded the highest ever volumes this quarter and was helped by improved pricing levels as well. We have registered significant exports of the specialty intermediates, which we shall continue to consolidate. A bit of a setback, and as you may have learned, there were unprecedented flooding in the entire Raigad Ratnagiri districts of Maharashtra in the last week of July. We were not spared. Nature's fury devastated our specialty intermediate site and the entire MIDC of Mahar and all the factories had to be shut down, the power lines were disconnected and the entire area was submerged in water of different levels. We at our factory had water levels of more than 14 to 16 feet. While our acetyl operations were marginally disrupted, operations at our specialty intermediate unit have been severely impacted. The unit had to undertake a safe shutdown due to the ingress of high levels of water, the disruption of power, and a general flooding in the area. While there was no impact on human life and environment, damages brought about by the flood are quite extensive. Therefore, the specialty intermediate unit is currently under shutdown while the acetyl unit is functioning at nearly full capacity. We are assessing the damages and the insurance survey is underway. The restoration work will start as soon as we have a stable power situation. While we are insured adequately 
including loss of profit, we expect that the performance of the specialty business will be impaired for part of this quarter. We expect some delays in the implement. Uh, we expect some delays in the implementation of the ongoing capexes at our specialty intermediate site. However, the fluorochemical site has been unaffected, and the ongoing capex plans at Lote Parshuram remain on track. Despite an extremely challenging quarter two for the specialty business. We expect to achieve our fiscal 22 business plan, leveraging the robust performance of quarter one. In conclusion, I assure you that as a team, we are strong and resilient, and we shall emerge stronger from this challenge as well. I'm confident of the long-term strategy and growth aspirations that we are pursuing, and with your support, I'm sure we shall be able to scale greater heights in the times to come. I take this opportunity to once again thank all our employees, customers, and other business partners, and you, the investors, for your support. And I will now pass on the mic to Mr. Pingle to throw open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you. Margaret, we could go ahead, please. You could open up the line. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Amar Moria from Alpha Accurate Advisors. Please go ahead. So thanks a lot for the opportunity. A couple of questions from my side. Uh, number one is, as you indicated that, you know, the specialty chemical plant in Mahar got impacted because of the flooding. Uh, so, I mean, how much, uh, I mean, how, how many weeks of the production got impacted because of this? And when did we expect that, you know, the plant will be running smoothly? Uh, that is number one, and then I have few follow-ups. So uh, I am Parthal Hi, sir. Uh, yeah. So the floods happened on the to, between the 22nd and 23rd. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the level of water was very very high. Powers were disrupted in the entire area, including domestic power, and even today the power is not stable. Okay. So the movements of the people inside to do the restoration work, the maintenance work, etc., is at a very slow pace. Insurance surveyors are there. So we have already lost about 20 days of operations, and currently we don't have an assessment in terms of when we can restart the plant at full capacity. Okay. However, given, given the configuration of our plants, it is going to start in a modular manner. We need to test the electricals. We are very heavy on electricals and instrumentation. We will have to uh, take care of all the safety measures, which is paramount for us. And then we'll restart. I think we are not really able to tell you right now what could be a possible day. Even the loss assessment is not yet complete, uh, Mr. Patel. Yeah? yeah? yeah. Okay. Uh, so basically, sir, uh, when you say that already 20 days of production is lost or, you know, and uh, so you, are we having an adequate inventory uh, so that we can at least, you know, supply to our customers and um, given the Q1 run rate, uh, uh, you know, what kind of like, you know, what I'm saying, what I'm, what I'm trying to understand is that, you know, um, what kind of seeing in, at the customer level, because you are the only supplier for this particular product and largely then it is import. Yeah. So, so, so you know, the business has two, two comp compartments. One is the acetides. 
Our acetyl business, which is around 60%, as you may see in the investor presentation also, uh, is unaffected. Okay. It is working at near full capacity. Correct. Okay. So that revenue stream is uh, going on. Correct. As far as the specialty unit is concerned, that is what is impacted. Even the stocks are impacted. Oh. We have already started dispatch. Yeah, yeah, it was under a lot of water. We have already started dispatching material, good materials to our customers. We are rationing them. We are in constant dialogue with our customers. We are aware of uh, their predicament as well. Mm -hmm. So it, I, my personal assessment is it should take another seven to 10 days time for us to give any indication of um, when the supplies are going to resume, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Of course, we shall supply material out of stock, whatever is good material available, and we'll reprocess whatever is recoverable. Okay. And, and let's say if there is any shortfall, so will you be like, you know, to maintain the customer relationship, will you be like importing the raw material and sourcing it to the customer? Not, not, not as of now. That is not what our current thinking is. We'll, we'll see how to deal with this situation in consultation with the customers. Okay, but at least you would be having three months of inventory for the speciality? No, we don't have three months of inventory, number one, and we are really looking at the stoppage of three months. Huh? Correct, 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 correct. No, I'm just trying to understand that. Fair enough, sir. Thanks a lot. I'll come back in queue. I have a few more. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants, we would request you to please submit your question to two at a time. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak Kodar from Sapphire Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so for the opportunity, so just wanted to understand if we if we uh, set aside uh, the smart flood situation, uh, so on a on, on a normalized kind of a situation, uh, so how how sustainable is the current performance in terms of margins or the other revenue? <laughs> uh, one of the ways of see, I cannot give you any numbers, Deepak. Okay, number one, mm -hmm. but one of the ways of assessing this could be to to sort of uh, you have one quarter lives you also have trailing quarters which are in the public domain mm -hmm. so if you take the trailing quarters and make some adjustments for the current reality you should be able to arrive at a number which could be quite close i mean this is a methodology by you which you can actually get an answer to to this question current run rate is of course very high yeah Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah, okay. I, I understood. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Uncle Serival from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just continuing with uh, Mahad there. So, you know, uh, given the significant impact on the SI front and our revenue contracts with, with the customers, uh, uh, how do you see, you know, this overall, you know, uh, the, the business overall shaping up? So let's say, you know, presuming, uh, you know, as you rightly mentioned, maybe it will take a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks to sort of, you know, uh, start the facility on a modular fashion. But let's say, you know, if I if I take a hit of the entire month on a, on a worst case scenario, uh, starting next, uh, you know, month onwards, will there be a loss of, uh, you know, revenue for this one month or we should be able to recoup in terms of the volume uptake in the coming months once things stabilize and we restart our operations? One line answer would be, Ankur, we'll be able to recoup. Okay. Now, are we going to recoup full 100% or are we going to do 80% or we are going to do 120% is a matter which will uh, probably emerge at a, at a slightly later date. In, in the contractual supply, also we run with certain headrooms for certain exigencies, but not this kind of exigencies, of course. Yeah? 
Okay. So on an annualized basis, we are not seeing too much of volumetric loss, Ankur. Sure. Okay. That that will be helpful. And uh, sir, uh, secondly, you know, from this quarterly performance perspective, now obviously you know uh, very strong performance there. Uh, just trying to see, you know, what part of uh, you know the business uh, clicked significantly here? Uh, was it largely led by the spreads there? And you know, as as uh, uh, you know, we we heard earlier in the call in the management community that higher volumes as well as pricing also benefited here. Uh, so, will it be uh, will it be possible to give some qualitative sort of you know uh, analysis there? Both, Ankur. So, let me address SI first. In the SI, we have really strong volumes in the quarter which has gone by. We produce at at very high rates. We could fulfill all the customer demands which were at a higher level. We had new contracted products with new contracted customers, which we started catering to. And uh, for the first time, we have 20% of our SI sales coming out from exports. Okay. So therefore, this is on the SI side. We also had uh, uh, price advantages or margin at, uh, attritions because the, the acetic acid price was on an upswing. So these two events helped us in the SI. In the AI, I think we have very successfully managed the, the escalation in the raw material costs and we have been able to pass, have a pass through, not only of the cost, but uh, there were uh, higher margins which were available. So these two are the primary reasons. In acetides, we didn't have much volume advantage. Okay, yeah. so the volume advantage was largely led by uh, uh, by SI. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and sir, lastly, if I may squeeze in, uh, uh, your sort of, you know, sense on the, the acetyl space, uh, you know, the spreads overall globally and, and, you know, your thoughts in terms of incremental supply coming in, uh, sustainability of margins there? I, my, I'll, I'll give a, I, I think I'll give you a negative assurance. I am not seeing the margins crashing down, Ankur. Okay. We are already about uh, 40 days into the current quarter. So the margins will hold up at reasonable levels. Of course, they are not going to hold up at the levels of the last quarter, but they will hold up at reasonable levels. Sure, that's helpful, sir. Uh, thanks a lot. And... Sorry, please, please go ahead. Yeah, that's my personal sense. I mean, it's not a guidance. Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. It's information Thanks, available sir. in the public domain. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's helpful. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question at this time. The next question is from the line of Shanti Patel from Shanti Patel Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, good evening. I joined little late, so I don't know whether my question will be litigative type or not. Now, what is our market share in respect of various verticals in which we are in India? See, our overall exports in the current quarter is of the order of about 19 to 20%. Yeah? Oh, right. So 80% of our sales is uh, in the domestic market in this quarter. Sorry. This could vary between 80 to say 70 percent, depending on the relative uh, margin profiles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You may also take into consideration that we have certain amount of traded sales. What I am talking about is sales out of manufacturing. Approximately 10 to 12 percent of our top line is through trading. So you need to make an adjustment for that. Yes, sir, uh, my question was, uh, what is our market share in respect of so market share? Products? I am sorry. Yeah. I am sorry. So the market share in the specialty intermediate space is between 50 and 60 percent. 
and in the acetyl space it is between 30 to 35 percent okay. yeah okay thank you very much thank you thank you the next question is from the line of Bharat Shah from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, just one question. Uh, one of the uh, one of the ponderables uh, has been uh, that uh, despite uh, Lakshmi Organics. Uh, uh, strength in the two areas uh, that it operates in and with very strong customer relationship and a fair degree of domination, uh, margins and the profitability have not reflected that and therefore return on capital employed also has not uh, fully mirrored uh, the strength of the business and the strength of the chemistry and the customer relationships. Uh, first quarter uh, that has gone by, given the first time a kind of a glimpse as to uh, potentially the could exist for Lakshmi. So, uh, how much of uh, how much of uh, what has happened? is structural and on a long-term basis uh, that will remain and may probably further improve as we get on to that journey with scale and etc. Some of it may be uh, for the time being, for the quarter gone by due to favorable circumstances. So that may or may not remain, but uh, structural part, how much has been and how much more can it uh, uh, kind of improve over a period of time so that all that also eventually reflects into superior capital efficiency? So, Bharat Bhai and Bhaskara Chaudhuri, there are two, three parts to this uh, question. One is when you look at the capital employed of Lakshmi today, Actually, a lot of capital is deployed in, in the new initiatives and the capexes which are going on. That's uh, uh, point number one. In terms of structural shift and where we see certain permanencies in terms of revenues and margins, etc., is the volume growth of our current specialty business. These volumes have grown based on customer demands, customer contracts, and these are assured uh, growths. As far as the acetyls business is concerned, my sense is that there is a growing demand because of the demand pool arising out of the consuming industries which is pharma, agro, packaging, paints, coatings, etc., etc. As a result, there is a demand side growth which is getting converted into margin expansions. And if I plot these numbers over a fairly long period of time, this becomes very clear. And the, But the spike that is there because of the input costs going up and therefore uh, the selling prices are going up and then they are correcting, this is something uh, which is not uh, sustainable over a long time. But to get an assurance or a, or a clearer picture on that, I think we need to see at least over the next, uh, say, three months and see where eventually it settles. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, put that question in a uh, little alternate session. Uh, Long-term uh, long improvement in the profitability of a business would depend upon uh, the strength of the chemistry, the cutting gauge involved, of course, the uh, demand and uh, factors uh, which may favorably or unfavorably affect scale, volume, uh, and uh, new processes uh, that we may have evolved, as well as uh, whatever efforts at the uh, cost uh, efficiency and all that. So uh, clearly the kind of margins that Lakshmi Organic in the past had 
were not fully reflective of the strength of the business and the strength of the chemistry and the customer relationship. Uh, uh, the margins in the first quarter uh, does give a, uh, some level of glimpse of the kind of strengths uh, and the advantages that Lakshmi as a business uh, has built over a period of time. So my question is, uh, leave out the short-term picture. I mean, uh, in the short run, what has happened is not all that critical. The uh, customer special demand factors, uh, temporary pull of the prices or whatever, on a more longer term over uh, journey when we think about, uh, given the character of the business, uh, the kind of margins that Lakshmi should enjoy uh, should be way higher than what it has been in the past. So at least that is my belief. So I'm trying to understand how much of that is there. Sure, Bharat Bhai. Well, Pansu, let me try and take, uh, yeah. take uh, a crack at this. So, so Bharat Bhai, harsh over here. Uh, yes. Perfectly, what you said is something we recognize as well. And the two businesses that we have today uh, operate with different philosophies. The cost and supply chain efficiencies, uh, which talk about the large scale and volume, primarily come from our AI business. And as you rightly mentioned, some quarters can be better than other quarters. But what is more structural for the kind of base that we have established is going to be largely in the SI and FI segments. So we have made several initiatives over the last, I would say, 12 to 24 months prior which is what is resulting in this kind of SI performance and increase in volumes, et cetera. More of this will happen as we're able to execute our CapExes, which are already underway. And similarly, you would see it in the SI. And of course, you have the third element of product to exchange, which will also come about in the SI segment in the coming quarters. So that's how we are looking at the business. We understand that the AI would continue to have a demand growth uh, at India consumption sort of patterns, but the specialities and the FI would have a much more significant growth, and that's what will take up our capital in terms of investments. Uh, Hans, uh, that's very really helpful. Just one last thing. Um, if you can help me with that. Yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, what I understand based on what you say, that AI, uh, there may be relatively more uh, degree of variation in the margin in the near term based on topicality of the situation, which is fine. But SI and FI uh, would be on a structurally uh, more sustained, more predictable, stronger uh, journey. And therefore, if we, let us say, leave out the current uh, quarter uh, uh, superior margin and all of that, if we leave it out of the computation and recognition, if we, let's say, look at two and three and four years ahead, uh, this is not going to be a flesh and pain uh, kind of a performance on margins. It's something that uh, should sustain and hopefully will get better in order to reflect the realistic uh, superior return on capital employed. Exactly. And just to give you a number, uh, in the last quarter, we completed about 65 crores of CapEx which again, all, all of that primarily in the specialities and slash FI segments, which is what talks about uh, moving into this direction. Thank you, Varsana. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Varsana. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruvam from HDFC Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, sir. Uh, sir, just uh, a similar question to the earlier one, but probably focusing more on the short-term things. Um, so, f f on the firstly, on the first question was on the AI business. So, so if you can help us understand what's what's the market shape is, just to better understand the business dynamics. You know, 
uh, what is driving such high margins such high pricing that you are able to pass on the rm cost is it extremely high demand is it some of the capacities have closed is it inventory benefiting is it probably the shipping cost which is probably benefiting or is it something else or a combination of everything if you can help us better understand the business dynamics harsh you want to take it <laughs> so dhruv i'll take a, i'll say a simple line uh, i don't think it would be fair to isolate it to any one factor dhruv and as mentioned previously we try to build out this business in a very differentiated manner which allows us to retain value irrespective of raw material of finished good prices and that's how we look at the business rather than try to play the market on either side mm-hmm. so sure. i know i was just trying to understand uh, what are the dynamics that play in the industry uh, you know which can uh, you know drive it on the upside or the downside or uh, on a steady state so just trying to understand what is played right now that uh, the situation is such no i completely so understand the sense of understanding the business uh, on an independent basis but i take a view but yeah. so that's the only idea I, i was trying to understand from sure i think it's multiple factors through in my opinion uh, it's got to do with uh, i would say largely supply chain efficiencies uh, from rm to dispatching the reaching a customer that's what enables this to a large extent plus our internal process and policies which we adopt and live by which sort of make this business consistently throughout cash just the ai business so i think that's what defines it uh, parthan uh, satish you want to add anything else see i mean for me harsh the one sentence answer is one has to look at the industries that we are catering to all these industries whether it is pharma agro packaging printing ink whatever all these industries have been growing at a double digit rate over the last 5 years and they are going to grow at that rate i think there has been a shift in the on the on the demand side mathematics which is creating the pull for this uh, business Ethyl acetate is also replacing several, you know, these toluene, MIBK, etc. based solvents. So there is a replacement which is happening. All this is eventually culminating into uh, the demand side uh, impact, according to me. In addition to uh, everything that you said. Got it. Yes. Yeah, so, so, yeah uh, that's uh, helpful a bit. And so, secondly, was in the SI business. Now, I uh, you said that uh, you have exported about 20% of your sales this this quarter. And earlier, if I uh, if I recall correctly, uh, you were largely a domestic player. So, is it something new? Which is, if I understand correctly, is it something new which has come? Uh, and uh, you know, uh, can it, uh, these export volumes can it grow significantly? Some some nature, uh, some initial thoughts that you you know can speak on. Sure. Sure. So, Dhruv, I think even at the time of IPO, when we were on about, we had specified this, that uh, one of the strategic new initiatives was to expand into certain new geographies. So, this has been coming, or not coming, but work in progress over a fairly long period. Again, 18 to 24 months is when we started this activity uh, long ago, and to get qualifications, product. the the usual process to get a customer win a customer's trust is what started long back which is what resulting in this of course this will grow further we do expect uh, some of the new plants coming up to be primarily export driven as well uh, which will further add to this overall percentage mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not it so um Yeah, and so the one last question, if I can squeeze, is the ethanol business you spoke about. Uh, what is that share of a total business? And um, uh, I believe there is a new ethanol policy. Are we? Uh, do we benefit from the tailwind from that policy? Yes, we do. Currently, our the ethanol business share is very low in our business, but of course, this policy is going to uh, help us in a big way. 
Thank you. I would request Thuram to rejoin the queue for follow-up questions. Request participants to limit your question to two at a time. The next question is from the line of Dhawal Shah from Giri Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Uh, so, a couple of questions. So, first one, uh, if I heard it correctly, you mentioned the aesthetic prices were uh, uh, on the on the upside, and and that benefited us uh, in the SI business. Uh, did I understand it correctly? Is that the reason? Yeah, because acetic acid is a raw material for the SI business as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. So they were so since so that's the raw material. So the and that's why the finished prices were also higher. Yeah. See the, the escalation is in times. The escalation was not in percentage. So it has not been some you know, I mean it's not gone up by twenty, thirty percent, it's gone up by three, three and a half times. You know, so it is going to impact. Okay. So that, that's where we got the entire pass on and uh, and there was an expansion in margin on the SI business. Okay. Uh, so second question is, uh, so as as an as FI21, uh, we were around 84% utilized capacity in the AI business. Uh, uh, and now in the first quarter, we see a lot of operating leverage also playing out. So, uh, so is it all majorly coming? Uh, so as you mentioned on the AI side, it was more of a pricing benefit which we had, and on the SI side, it was a lot of uh, a mix of margin and operating leverage here. No, I mean not margin and operating leverage. It is it is volume and operating leverage and pricing. All three eventually culminated into. Uh, the results which we've seen now. Okay, so uh, would you share the utilization levels of these uh, of the SI business? Uh, not really right now because I mean we have not we don't run that math to be very honest okay. because it, a lot of it actually depends on the product mix. Hmm. We run that math once a year when we do the business plans, etc. But we don't really run it on a monthly or a quarterly basis. So it's a function of the product mix as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and sir, if the so as the acidic acid prices from like 30 rupees a kg went to around 19 May, uh, which which is which is what you're saying. Uh, so now, if the prices go southward, then what is the impact? Then uh, some of the prices correct, but the question is about the margin. Yeah, the spread, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the spread. Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Shah. I would request you to rejoin the queue for follow-up questions. Uh, participants, please submit your question to two at a time. There are several others waiting for their queue as well. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jignesh Kamani from GMO and Company. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Parsa. Uh, on the SI business, uh, we are planning to since we're working on two or three new products. So, was there any revenue contribution from the new business meaningfully in the uh, uh, first quarter, or mainly growth in the volume came from the export? No, there were some new uh, products which, which were in a very small way sold last year. They have picked up speed in this last quarter. And on the domestic. Uh, how is the volume growth in the domestic SI business, or it was almost flat and many contribution was from the export? So, uh, you you know, uh, the domestic growth in terms of demand and volume is there even in Q1 and specifically to do with the SI. Of course, in AI, the domestic growth, we're seeing a lot more. Understood. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Alicia Mahavla from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, so good evening and thank you for taking my question. If I want an update on the FI uh, business, so is the um, new plant on track? Are we expecting it in Q4? And any indication of how we're expecting it to ramp up in year one, two, three? Arch, you want to go in? Sure, thank you. So, Alicia, uh, let me just. Uh, Simply put, uh, we were lucky that the site at Loki was not that impacted by the flood and structural fabrication, etc., could continue at the site. We currently, I think, have more than 
250 people odd working at the site in India. And I think there are about 70 people odd in Italy, which are busy dismantling the site over there. So we expect that the containers are moving, have moved from the site itself uh, of all the plant machinery, etc. And we are still on track for a last quarter start. With respect to your second part of the question on the on the ramp up, uh, we are targeting we are targeting 70% of peak, say in year one. Though we, that might be a little aggressive, that's the internal target we are taking. Uh, we will see where we reach. We are already in touch with several customers. Customers have visited our sites, already visited our pilot plants to get the confidence that we have the tech or we've absorbed the technology and ready to produce. Sure. And what is the total capex we're doing? I know we did 100 uh, million last year. And uh, how much are we looking to do this year to complete this one? What is the total capex? So the, yeah, so the, the FR business should take up about 270 to 80 crores uh, total earning. And uh, will you be comfortable sharing what is the expected asset turn in this? So uh, FI, yeah, go ahead, Martha. So it should be 1.2, one of that order. It will depend again on the product mix. And the asset turn will undergo change uh, between year one of operation and year three of operations. Oh. And if I may add a, two more sentences beyond what Harsha said, you see, there was a time when the business plan was actually uh, running behind the project implementation. Today, the business plan visibility is far more not far more is more than the project implementation visibility because there has been a complete travel restriction and our teams have not been able to travel to Italy, which is actually coming in as a handicap for us just now. I think we need to keep this in mind. Yeah? Understood. And so my last question is on the capex that we're looking to do in the SI business. Uh, you did mention that while we do understand there's a delay because of floods. What is the percentage capacity that we're looking to increase there? And before floods, when were we expecting it to come on stream? Sorry, did you did you mean the SI business, Alicia? Yes, yes, the SI business. Okay. No, so uh, initially, Alicia, we had planned for our plants, uh, the two cap major capexes going on, to be commissioned in within this calendar year, so in the latter half of this calendar year. But that might get further delayed. That damage assessment of all of whatever had reached plant and was submerged in water is currently going on. And what was the capacity expansion we were looking for this uh, business for SI? So we are, we don't talk about volumes or product in this, but there are there, there were two specific plans for contractual uh, requirements. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shanti Patel from Shanti Patel Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Sir, my question is, taking into consideration all the factors and the present prevailing situation, what will be the approximate turnover for the current year, that is 21-22? And will you be able to maintain the margin which, uh, uh, which we were having in the past? So, I will take that. To be very honest, you have seen the disconnect between the top line, bottom line in quarter one, right? Okay. So that is the business which we operate, number one. And on top of that, we have the floods. But as our chairman, uh, Mr. Goenka, had mentioned, we will still continue to drive our business plans, which we have uh, finalized for ourselves in the... Uh, beginning of the year and as I had responded to Ankur, we are not forcing any significant volumetric loss over the full year. So I think this is the indication which we can give you. No, sir, that is nice. Quantitatively, you, you say that it won't uh, be less, I mean, just a rough idea that it won't be materially less as compared to the last year, correct? 
no i will not comment on this i have a problem with this material world so <laughs> you have to learn your math acha <laughs> now second week no you know no fine the second is the price of our product uh, they are i mean as compared to last year they are uh, uh, i mean what is the trend and what you because of last your experience what you uh, what you can say about that in my ex- see the experience has not held us in good stead in the first quarter okay the first quarter numbers are so i think we'll need some i mean we'll have to see how the next 2 to 3 months pan out correct then we'll probably have a sense of how the year is going to look like okay yeah okay 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 thank you very much thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of nitin agarwal from dam capital please go ahead hi uh, thanks for taking my question uh how sure uh, just on the si business uh, i think a very qualitative look at the business uh, outlook for the next 2 to 3 years i guess one change which we've seen happening in the business is exports uh, and the proportion of the business are going up right uh, i mean qualitatively as a business what other changes do you see happening in the profile of this business uh, you know apart from the volume gains uh, when we look through the next 2 3 years so uh, i think in uh, two three things that uh, we've been planning which are fairly simple for our business uh, i think export markets for existing and new products was the first thing which is now started to play out in the last quarter the second thing would be the launch of a few new products which is currently undergoing capexes and the third is contractual business so as a whole the percentage of our contractual business will go up making this business a lot more sticky and uh and on this uh, last one that you mentioned the contractual business uh, these are what are uh, typically the business that you are charging is is business which is like a dedicated business or a, or a or that dedicated product that you do exclusively for some clients or what would be the nature of this business so i mean in the classic term of a contract there is a commitment from the customer side for a certain product with a certain volume over a certain time those will usually be on a longer term basis uh we classify these as anything uh, more than 3 years so we are looking to push this more and more to that mark uh and that's what will change the way the si business outlook will uh, we are trying to drive this rather than it's put to put it that way and aspirationally where would you see this uh, proportion be for the business uh, say in 3 years i won't give that number out uh, in the uh, for obvious okay. reason yeah okay okay sure sure thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ashish singh an individual investor please go ahead good evening sir uh, first congratulate uh, you for excellent number uh most of my uh, queries has been answered uh, just one is left i uh, just wanted to understand what is the impact of the container shortages which is going on on our business uh, we do not actually export in containers most of our cargo are liquid cargo so they go in iso tanks and we have also been facing these challenges but we have been able to manage so far freight rates as you know have also shot through the roof but then we are living with it like everybody else uh, just a continuation uh, are we able to pass that uh, uh, increased freight charges so let me uh, uh, actually let me put it in two perspectives i think on the running business side yes we are able to pass those on uh, to our customers however on the capex front there would be some escalation shipping costs which which is moving our plant from italy to india so that assessment is on uh, but these are the this is how we view the container and the shipping issues globally thank you sir uh, i wish all the best thank you 
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neil Halbe, a retail investor. Please go ahead. Neil Halbe, your line is in the talk mode. You may go ahead with your question. May we request you to unmute yourself and proceed with your question. Due to no response, we'll move to the next question, which is from the line of Bharat Shah from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah. Um, see, uh, uh, either Patho Saab or Harsh, uh, uh, if we take a look at our business say, uh, three to five years hence, uh, what, are, uh, what are some of the things which are not visible today or visible only partially, but uh, over this time frame can uh, change in, uh, for better uh, the character, the strength, and the quality of our business, not just in terms of the growth rate, but also in terms of the character of the business, uh, uh, say over the next three to five years. It may maybe only partially be realized or partially visible or not visible, but something that excites you in terms of uh, changing the complexion of the business over time. Sure. So, Harsh, you want to take it first? Yeah, I can start first. So, so Bharat, I think there are two two primary trends that excite us a lot. Uh, when we speak to customers and they are eager for us to grow, uh, these are typically all international-based customers in various ways and not doing classic me too, but really going up the innovation value chain using Indian scientists, technologies, et cetera. Uh, that, that really excites us. And we have seen that with specific technologies, which we've been able to create technologies that don't exist anywhere else in the world. And that's what excites me personally. The second part is uh, on the FI business. I think there are some parts of the FI business which have a, a very, very high end of technology which have never been part of the Indian chemical space. Leveraging this into a completely new industry is where we are seeing. It will be a small part in the first year of our FI portfolio, but Offshooting that and making that exponentially grow is what excites me, Bharat Bharat. Parsa Saab? Bharat Bhai, I am very audacious. Huh? In the sense that if you look at the fluorine industry, Navin fluorine came in 1967, everybody else came in 1990-91. They have reached a point where they are today in 30 years. And our starting block is far ahead of them, Bharat Bhai. That's my personal sense. Whatever we have got from Mitheni gives us a solid head start. And if you ask me, I mean, if we don't really do a blunder, then we'll do really well, Bharat Bhai. You look at the acetyl business that we have. It is a solid business. It's a world-scale business. We are seventh, eighth put together in the world. And, the, and then we have the a SI business, which is housed alongside that. So I think so we have a great combination, great combination. We need some time. We are new kids on the block. We've just been, you know, uh, getting into visibility. We, we use these sessions, these questions as uh, our learning sessions, as, as feedback from people uh, who are experts and entrenched in this space. And uh, yeah, that's what excites me, Parapai. Sure, and any, I'm just being greedy, but any comments from Raviji? Nay, Bharat Bhai, I think uh, clearly we are putting all our bets and we are all in the chemical sector is going to see a unbelievable, unprecedented CapEx cycle. And I can, I feel that our company is going to play one good role 
in this capex cycle and take advantage because of our own skill sets our execution capabilities and our networks into this industry sure 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 thank you so much and therefore uh, i presume uh, the transformation that we are talking about is not merely due to external opportunity changing of course that is required but internally also we are uh, transforming ourselves in order to match up to that absolutely varad bhai absolutely see we have varad bhai taken 30000 square feet of r&d space just a few months back during these times our capex outflows are going unabated we are batting an eyelid to sort of you know rethink so we are really moving at speed and i think we'll do well varad bhai god willing Thank you. All the best and congratulations to the uh, entire team and to Lakshmi Ogin. Thank you, Varun. Thank you, Varun. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tanuj Kiyani, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, all my questions have been answered. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amar Moria from Alpha Accurate Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah. So thanks a lot for the opportunity again. Uh, so this question is for the Harsh. Uh, Harsh sir, wanted to understand like you know, uh, all our plants are largely located into Mahar. So this is a kind of a location, single location risk. So going forward, you know, any new capex which we are planning, are we planning to diversify the location from Mahar to somewhere else? No, indeed. I think uh, the first one is in a uh, photo site is not in Mahad, strategically speaking. It's in Lote, different geography completely, Correct. and uh, that was done with a strategic intent. I think the next round of capexes, etc., would also have a similar thought process. Okay, but then. Uh... we will be largely doing all our new locations also in maharashtra i mean any plan to move from uh, this location to somewhere in the dahej or gujarat something like that i wouldn't want to comment on that right now until something is concrete maybe a little early to say if and when it the appropriate time comes you will inform you okay uh, thank you sir thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Rohan Gupta from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good evening, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, this is just a further elaboration what you just mentioned on the Bharat Bhai's question. Um, sir, you mentioned that on chlorine-based chemistry, definitely your company has started and has bought into this business from a different uh, scale altogether. While there are leading players in that business from quite a long time. Uh, so just uh, can you give a uh, little bit more on this your uh, input in terms of our capabilities, uh, chemistry, and our science connect, and uh, uh, when we are competing with these old players like you know maybe Madhu and Sarath and Gsl Vijayakumar, I mean when we are dealing and competing with these kind of players, established players in the market, and what as we have that helps us in getting. The business on the customer, or it is just only until opportunities which is just offering uh, uh, a business to us. So, if you can just elaborate a little more on that. Thank you, Alex. So, the first thing, the intent of getting this is not to compete with any of the existing players in this market. I think what Parsha was trying to refer to was the speciality fluorine nature in general. and how companies have come up we've been lucky to jump a part of the learning curve through our acquisition the second none of the exist none of the products that we're going to be starting off with compete or have been produced in india before so there is adequate market for uh, in the fluorine space and we are looking and choosing several pieces of that what was made by mitani before and where we believe we have a competitive edge so sir you want to say that uh, uh, there is enough opportunity for everyone without getting into each other's space 
and uh, in the cleaning based chemistry and the product basket which we have selected we are not going to compete with uh, any of these at the stage yeah by and large yes uh okay so uh, in little bit more if you can just share on a fluorine based chemistry uh if you have a uh, uh, industry related uh, data that what kind of what kind of opportunity size and the product basket which we are getting into and the and the processes which in which we are getting into over next 2 to 5 years if you can just give what kind of size of those products those markets can be because you said that uh right now none of these engine players are doing those kind of product basket so i just want to understand that when you are entering into this opportunity and this, what can be the size and the scale of that uh, basket if you can just give some 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 thought on that you har she want to go ahead uh, show par to you know i mean i don't think we really talk product wise but um the market size is more than 4 billion in terms of just our addressable size so sorry but i didn't get the number how much you mentioned 4 billion dollars how uh, so can you repeat again i'm sorry i'm not getting that number it is 4 billion okay sorry 4 billion, billion okay dollars okay us dollars yeah yeah right Okay, and so four billion dollar is the is the is the size of the product and the or the chemistries or in which we are getting into. And right now, none of these products are uh, manufactured in India, and mostly it is going to be the import replacement opportunity or maybe export opportunity for us. Both, both. Okay, okay, that's pretty helpful. So thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take one last question, which is from the line of Pallavi from the Consulting Point. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, I just wanted to understand in terms of ethanol, uh, what would be the capex and what percentage of uh, it is met in house currently? We we produce ethanol. Are you talking about the oil? Yeah. Market? How much? Yeah, no, no, no. No, so how much? Yeah, you produce ethanol, so uh, you use it also. So how much is outsourced uh, in terms of your requirement? Do you meet hundred percent in house, and uh, do you also buy from outside? No, we 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 do about twenty percent of our requirement in house. Right, seventy to eighty percent is uh, still bought out. Right, so would you be taking that percentage up, and what would be the capex for ethanol in? Uh, we we don't have a laid down thought on the table just now uh, pallavi okay right right that's all from my side thank you thank you as there are no further questions i now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments no thank you uh, very much uh, uh, margaret and uh, thank you everybody the investors and uh, just want to assure you that lakshmi is a transparent company and we will share with you updates as we go along we have aspirations to grow to become one of the few one of the many respected global chemical specialty companies in the world and it will take your good wishes and uh, we look forward to live up to your expectations thank you Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Lakshmi Organic Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.